Hello, I'm Paul Tonko, and I represent New York's 20th Congressional District in Congress. I am indeed sorry that we are unable to join together for this year's Asbestos Awareness Conference, but I do wish you and your family strength and good health as our nation responds to the COVID-19 public health crisis. I hope you will take all of the necessary precautions to keep yourselves and your neighbors safe. While much of our attention is focused on this current health emergency, I do not want us to forget the thousands of Americans that are dealing with asbestos-related health uh, conditions. So I hope we can take time out of our disrupted lives to recognize over the past several days Asbestos Awareness Week. I am grateful for this recognition, but truthfully, I am much more grateful to all of the doctors, scientists, public health experts, labor leaders, and victims who are taking time this week to share their stories learn the latest in disease prevention, and advocate for action. I have had the pleasure of working with the Asbestos Disease Awareness Organization for some many years now on toxic chemical issues. Through their advocacy, I have been able to meet with great people, great people like Linda Reinstein, Mike Matmuller, and others who either are dealing with an asbestos-related disease or have had a loved one who did or is struggling. And time and time again, I have heard stories of Americans who live, work, and raise their families who have done everything right, but are suffering the consequences of some ill-fated exposure. Sadly, for far too long, the federal government has failed to address this threat with the seriousness it demands. It is shocking that despite all of the evidence, despite what we know about the dangers of asbestos exposures, despite the thousands of asbestos-related deaths each year, that the United States continues to allow asbestos in commerce. It is past time to say enough. I am very happy to report that H.R. 1603, the Allen Reinstein Ban Asbestos Now Act of 2019, was successfully advanced out of the House Committee on Energy and Commerce last November with a strong bipartisan vote of 47 to 1. This overwhelming vote would not have been possible without the work and advocacy done by the tremendous coalition of public health and labor organizations, as well as the efforts of the bill's author, Suzanne Bonamici, the committee's chair, Frank Pallone, and my counterpart on the Environment Subcommittee, John Shimkus. This bill's enactment would be a huge achievement. It would require that the uh, United States takes long overdue action to ban asbestos within one year. The bill also requires a study of asbestos legacy uses in order to help prevent exposure and spur remediation where appropriate, because we need to make sure that people can work and live without fear of a deadly asbestos exposure. So I want to thank ADAO, Linda and her family, and all of the countless number of advocates that have made this success to date possible. There has been great progress, but there is still work left to be done. I hope we will work together to resolve any remaining issues. And when we return to a normal legislative calendar in Washington, I will continue to fight to get this bill passed through the House. It is truly an honor to be recognized and rest assured, I am committed to continuing the fight to protect public health and prevent asbestos caused diseases. And with that, my friends, I thank you.